Something in here. Let's see if Adam knows what's going on. See if you can tell what else happened in there, Adam. It's a mess. <laughs> you know what that is? It looks like mouse damage. Yeah. So this is a. This was also had a Shoot mouse out. nest in it. So you've got little bits of, uh, of cloth in there that were blown by mice. So if you take your boxes off your hive and you just set them out in the field and you leave them there, this is. This what happens. So you shouldn't do that. Um, this is this is an interesting one. I'm not going to show you because you know what's going on. <laughs> Some of the new people, see if they can tell what's going on in there. This is one. So you see how heavy that is? So this frame is uh, full of bee bread. So that's a uh, there's pollen and uh, a mixture. It's a mixture of pollen and honey, and that's the that's the protein source that the bees, you know, that the bees eat. That's what they uh, eat. This is a this is what this is kind of a typical uh, foundationless frame. This is if you uh, you let your bees build the build the comb without giving them a sheet of foundation underneath. This is how this is kind of what you'll get. If you ever get Yeah, the bees know what they're doing. They don't So many times. Here, but it's very yeah, good. I'm sure it's a fun event. It is. It's just right okay. <laughs> I hate this like this. It's just a little bit I, I, I think the trick is that yeah. well ventilated. Seems too short. So this is just kind of a. It's got a little bit of 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 a little Do you know how you would identify that as bee bread? I just, you know, I get a lot of pollen. Do you? Oh, look at I that. want them to have it. Sure. I get a lot of pollen because I have a screen oh. underneath and the <laughs> pollen just falls down. I love screens. I qualify as a, a really good bee killer. 
<laughs> I've, I've, I've killed, I know a lot of my bees haven't made it, but uh, at this point, um, I got most of my bees through the winter this year, and I've got, I'm, I've got the great plans for uh, um, increasing my, my holdings, uh, my little empire. So, um, Suzanne asked me to start talk about what goes on looking at a frame um, in the hive. But I decided that I would start with uh, looking at the outside of the hive because I think as you're approaching your hive, you want to start from the outside and work your way in. One of the things that I've learned, and, and as a beginning beekeeper, you won't be able to do this, but one of the things that I've learned is the less I look at them and the less I mess with them, the better they do. Um, there are exceptions to that rule, and of course, first year or two or three or four or five, I was, you know, in the hive every day and I would go through and I looked at every frame of every hive. And, uh, you know, I, it's fun, um, but uh, it's, all, it's a lot of work and it doesn't really necessarily do the bees much good. So I, I, I've been moving away from, you know, intensive involvement with the inside of the hive and I try to do as little as I can um, at this point. Um, but this is, this is kind of a, you know, a decent looking hive in uh, kind of a late spring. This is what you would see. Um, I, I have holes in all of my hives. These are all medium hive uh, boxes. And I have, most of my hive bodies have a little vent hole there. And um, one, I think ventilation, in my experience, is, is really important the hives. Um, I've had more trouble with moisture building up in the hives and uh, the bees suffering from that than I have with uh, bees getting cold. So, so did you just drill holes in there? Yeah. How, how big the holes? These are three quarter inch holes. Okay. And um, a wine cork yep. plugs them up perfectly. So in the winter I stick wine corks in there. Um, but uh, a three quarter inch spade bit is how I drill them. Um, and I noticed, I've always noticed that the bees like going in and out. They don't, if they have holes of in higher up, they, they, pick, they typically don't use the, as much the, the holes at the bottom. So I think that they prefer to move in and out of the, the box that they're working on. You drill them in the angles so as they're trying to get rid of grow mice. Nah. <laughs> it's a good idea. I wouldn't, uh, next time I'll do that. Huh? Oh, I, uh, this, this must have been a, uh, I was combining two hives, so when you've got a, a lot of times you uh, have a hive that's weak or a hive that's not doing well or a hive that doesn't have a queen, and rather than uh, try to rescue it through whatever means, you'll, the best thing to do is just combine it with a, a stronger hive. So the way you can do that is you put a sheet of uh, newsprint over the, the, the stronger hive and you put the, the weaker box, the weaker bees on top. Um, usually in a week or two, they'll completely get rid of all the paper. So inside this box, there's no newspaper. Um, the bees have taken it all out. You'll find, depending on how heavy the paper is, you'll, you'll sometimes find shredded paper. So why you need the paper? Um, you, you don't want them to fight. You want them to get used to this, the scent of each other gradually. So you don't, if you put them, uh, bees will reject um, bees from another hive. So they can smell the different queens have a different smell. They can smell each other and they'll fight it if you don't. And you do it so they introduce themselves gradually. So anyway, this is, this is what you might see in a, a healthy hive. It's got it's got bees in every at every level in all the boxes. Um, there's lots of them. You'll see them coming and going. It's interesting if you watch that. You all, it's almost like a perfect equilibrium. Two will fly away, and two will land, and five will fly away, and five will land. It's kind of funny to, to watch it. Um, this is a you know this only holes at the top of this one, but this is a. A stronger hive, maybe later in the season. This is uh, what this is called bearding. Um, 
It, the, bees, the, the bees are trying to expand to uh, um, regulate the temperature, so they, they want to uh, have more air flow through the box, so they're, they're moving. They just, the cluster expands and they end up pushing some of themselves out, and they just hang on the outside of the box. Um, it's, that's a, an extreme cluster, an extreme beer. Um, but that's, uh, there's nothing really wrong with it. It can suggest um, overcrowding in the hive, but it doesn't necessarily um, suggest anything wrong. Is that, is that what you noticed? Yeah. 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 Know, it's nothing to be alarmed about if you see something like this. Yeah, last summer, for most of the summer, a couple of my big highs were just outside yeah. all summer. Yeah. Yeah. Would they go back in in the evening? Sometimes, so, but on hot nights they'd stay out. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They'll stay out all night. So this is an interesting thing. This is sometimes you see this. Um, this is a sign of a, of a disease. It's, I think it's a fungal disease. It's called the chalk root. Um, so if you see this, and this is, these are. Uh, these are larvae that have sort of mummified and, and uh, fallen out of the comb or, or been uh, pulled out of the comb. And they'll, the bees will bring them out and sort of pile them out inside the hive and they'll think they'll pile them out. Um, chalk root or stone root, I think it could be either one. Um, it basically, it's a sign of uh, lack of ventilation. So if the hive is too moist inside, um, this this will, this syndrome will develop, you'll see this. It's not very serious. How can you tell if it's too moist? If you see chalk. Too <laughs> late. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you wouldn't know it really. You, you know, I don't have, you know, humidity detectors on the inside. But that's, you know, that, that would be, that's how I knew it. So in this hive, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, there's a piece of uh, plastic that's closing off the bottom of the, of the uh, screen on the bottom board. Um, so when I saw that, I took that out, I took the plastic out, and the hive gets more ventilation and the, the chalk root um, resolves. So it's not, a, it's not a very serious disease. It's a, it, it is a disease. Um, what I've heard is that it it's actually uh, inoculates the hive against Nosema, which is a more serious disease. So um, chalk root is not a bad, a really bad thing to have. It's, but you, you want to give the hive more ventilation when you see it. So this is kind of a healthy hive. This is what you see when you take the top off. Um, you see uh, bees between all of the frames here. This is a, you know, this is a, a strong hive. Um, Sometimes when you take the top off, they'll all be kind of looking up at you from between the frames. That's always fun. Um, this has had the top off for a few minutes, and they've sort of started to come out and, uh, um, you know, cluster, cluster on the top. I haven't blown any smoke. If you blow smoke, they'll go back down in the hive. Um, so this is, this is what you want to see this time of year. You'll see just a, you know, you'll only see these in a few of the center frames or maybe off on one side. You won't see it completely full from side to side like that. It's normal. Um, you probably, this is probably late summer at, at the kind of the height of the colony's um, strength and population. Uh, this is a little earlier in the year. Um, more, uh, you know, more centered. The, the bees are more centralized. Um, there's nothing out, no bees out here. Again, it's pretty normal. Um, another strong hive. So yeah, this is just another strong hive. I found this on the internet. At this point, you know, this is probably a bottom box. This this is somebody else's. This isn't mine. Um, but you you'll have a hive, and it'll be three or four, you know, five boxes tall. And as you take them off and you work your way down, there's more. And and it can be pretty intimidating when you get down to, you know, the boxes down here and they just, they come out and they're like, you know, crazy. So um, just, you know, get ready because you're going to see that. You shouldn't be too.
too afraid. Um, so what does normal look like? So now we're going to look at um, some frames. And I'm trying to concentrate on what, what's healthy and normal and what you should expect to see if everything's going right. Um, this, is, this is like normal, healthy brood, right? So this is all, all capped brood under each one of these little brown things. There's a little bee getting ready to come out. Um, they'll come out in a week or so. Um, it's got nurse bees over the whole thing. Um, it's got these little holes. You know what these holes are for? These are really cool. You guys, you know what those are for, Suzanne? What the holes are for? Yeah, why, why, is this a problem or is this? Sometimes if you have wires going through your wax, I've seen her avoid that. Wow. That's not what it For is. egg laying, but the other this, that would mean that, that would be a straight line, a hole straight yeah. across following the wire. Right. So I would say that either uh, they decided that there was something wrong with that bee and they pulled it out. So uh, in, in somewhere in the midst of the development. So the, the queen laid something in there later and it's not as far along, maybe. Actually, that's not what it is. Okay. Um, this, is a, this is another, this is a really great frame of brood, right? Yeah. But these holes aren't, these are left there intentionally by the, uh, the bees. Those are for the heater bees. So the, the bees will, the, they'll go in there, there, there'll be a certain number of bees that are, their job is to keep everybody warm. And they'll go into, they'll go into that hole and warm their bodies up, they can warm their bodies up to 95 degrees or so. And they'll keep every, they'll keep all the brood around them warm. Um, and the brood, when it's the brood, when it's um, developing, they keep that whole brood nest at 90, 93 degrees. Right. So the the bees that are developing are always kept at almost mammalian body temperature. Um, what kind of bees do you have? Italian or regular ones? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess they're Italian. I don't know. I don't know what I, they're. I, I, most of mine started out as Jim Bob packages, um, and most of them have been around for, you know, many seasons. I've, I've, for the last two or three years, I bought uh, two packages of Wolf Creek bees last year, but the, for the most part I split and um, make increase um, myself. I buy queens occasionally, but I don't uh, buy packages. Um, yeah, so this is a great kind of normal, well, healthy look, frame. Look, I'm sorry, they drone cells there? The bullets? Oh, oh, they look like bullets? Yeah. This guy? No, 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 no left. Left. Left right. would be over here. Yeah, those guys. Up top, right yeah, there. Yeah, right these, these would be drone cells. Yeah. And these, there's, there's a queen cup there. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's another. Yeah, there's another. Supposed to show you that. Really <laughs> okay, so there's an egg. That's what a that's what a bee egg looks like. In case you've never seen one, <laughs> this is how it looks in the cell. Um, there, the, the queen will lay, you know, stick her abdomen down there and lay one egg uh, right at the bottom of the cell. This is a pretty good picture of what you would see um, in a in a frame with eggs. Um, it's, they're hard to see. I mean, they're, they're just these little spots. They're much smaller than a grain of rice. It's funny, once you get the hang of seeing them, you can see them. Um, it took me a long time to get the hang of seeing them. I, I don't have any trouble really seeing them now, but um, it, it took me a long time before. So I they're not covered. Them. They're not covered yet. No, they don't, they don't cover them until they're two and a half, three weeks old, something like that. Would they I, I fall out of it. Nine or ten days. No, they're kind of stuck in there. I'll three, show you some pictures. Three days has that. an egg, and then six days has a The cap that at nine or ten is. Oh, here we go. Here's the stages. <laughs> Here's the stages, but it doesn't show the uh, the uh, the time. I I have notes on the time. So this is kind of a picture of of the different stages. So there's an egg there, and here here is a really tiny larva there. And there's some bigger larva. Um, once they get to be um, pretty big like this and fill the whole uh, cell up, then 
they'll cap the cell off, um, and you'll see see something like we saw before, like this, cap freeze. This is another picture of pretty normal, um, pretty normal brood frame. Um, yeah, if I saw something like this, I wouldn't, you know, this, this looks fine. Um, this looks, looks fine to me. I wouldn't be concerned with, you know, some open cells. I'll show you some pictures later where you, where you might start to be concerned. This, this is kind of, this is probably okay. <coughs> what do you think, Adam? How's that look? Uh, I think it's probably borderline, but fine. I wouldn't be too worried about it. Yeah, you wouldn't. I mean, what's what's a little bit concerning here is we're starting to get a lot of open stuff around here, but it yeah. could just be later in the season. Like the hive goes, you know. So in the spring, if you looked in most of my hives now, there would be a an area of that is spans several frames that's got brood like that. And it would probably, most of it would probably look kind of like this. Um, the early spring, it tends to be really yellow, um, especially if it's on new comb. Towards the, towards the later part of the spring, into the summer, it starts to look like this. Um, it starts to look a little bit more, more open cells, but this still looks pretty yeah, I would just add, Dave, kind of what you're saying, just thinking about the whole context. Not, yeah. I mean, individual frames are important, but right. what's the season? What do the other brood frames look like? Right. right. You know, what's going on in the hive? So. Right, right. Now, remember that the, the colony is the organism, right? The individual bees are, are like cells in the body, but the colony itself is the organism. Um, the, and that's the, the colony is what you're trying to regular. I'm not trying to manage individual bees, not even the queen. This is a this is a comb of cap honey. So this is your kind of your goal. This is a nice looking comb. There's a couple of hive beetles on here. But other than that, that's a, a some, comb some, that's probably some ready of those to burn. Bees' bodies look awful long. Is that just is that just yeah. Like the one all the way on the left? It could just be perspective. And then the one over here? They're, they're, they do, they do uh, sometimes look long. I mean, there's a, a, a nice, healthy bee in the middle of the summer is a pretty robust bee, you know, creature. They, 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 there's nothing wrong with those guys. Um, small cell bees are actually smaller. If you are having small cell, if you have small cell foundation or small cell bees, um, they, they look a little smaller than that. But, but those aren't, those don't look outsized to me. And sometimes you'll see a worker bee that does look bigger, you know, that you mistake for a, drone? a queen or a drone, yeah. What were those black dots again? Those are high bees. We'll get to high bees. High bees are awful. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Oh, that's nice. No, they're much worse than moths. There's a nice frame of honey. That's what you want to see, right? So that's, you know, this is a this is like perfect, right? This is this is every cell is, is capped. It's got this nice um, kind of fluffy white wax. Um, this is a this is like probably just freshly grown this season. Um, this is a perfect frame of honey. They don't all look like this, you know. You can have they generally start um, capping and work out from the center, and you'll often you know have not have it. You'll, har you'll harvest frames that don't have cappings on the, the bottom of them. You, you, want, a, you want it to be 75% cap. Um, is that towards the late summer that they would do that? Or is that, there's no brood in there, it's just honey? Yeah, there's no brood in there, there's just honey. Yeah. That would be, if we weren't harvesting, that would be to be stocked well. Yes. It could be, yeah. So that's, that's what you want to harvest, but that's also what you want to leave. They will, so the, the, the brood is going to be in a cluster in the center and it's always going to be kept together with some minor exceptions, right? So
So there's always going to, there, there's going to be, the brood will always, is like the body right, of, the, of the colony. They will fill everything outside of the brood nest with whatever they feel like. So <laughs> typically around the brood nest is bee bread, really close to the brood nest, and then honey is outside that, and then honey could be up above that. Now, the, a strong colony will be able to put away a lot of honey. That's why you put supers on top, and they just move up and fill them up with, with honey. And the idea is you take, you know, you take what's on top and leave enough for them to get through the winter, um, and that's how you get honey. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's what it is. Um, another fairly normal thing to see. So this is somebody that uh, put a medium frame into a deep box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. so this is great. This is nice, nice, tightly laid. And you know, this, if you see this, you know you've got a good queen, right? Because she's laying everything. She's laying, and, and the hive is healthy because no, nothing's dying. All everything that she lays is maturing at the same rate. It's all getting covered and capped up. It's all healthy. Out here we've got uh, we've got bee bread, so that's what this yellow stuff is. There may be a little honey up there, and then down here, wherever they have space um, and they're not constrained by the by the comb. Or foundation of the comb, they'll they'll make a drone comb. So this is the the large. It's a it's a bigger cell. The, they'll lay drones in there, and um, they do that for a couple of reasons. One is if they have space, they like to they like to make drones. Bees love to make drones, <laughs> um, and I used to be anti drone, but I've come to love my drones. <laughs> So they want, if you have a 10 frame, a 10 frame box, they want a frame and a half of drones. Um, so if you've got two, two deep boxes of, of brood, they want three frames of drones. That's what they want. So you can, you can take it away from them and you can do anything you want with it, but they will try to get 15% or more drones. Um, so I, I usually just let them, but, but anyway, the, what, the other reason that drones are, are It's a, if the cluster needs to contract to keep this worker drone at 90 degrees, they'll let the, they'll let the drone uh, brood die. Hmm. So they can sacrifice the drone. Um, I don't know why I have so many healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so here's another one. This is, this is, so here's a queen cup. Here's some drone brood. Um, here's one of the, these weird little drone. What are these now? Do you know what those are? These little, these look like little bullet frames sticking, um, sticking out. I think they're drones, kind of sticking out of the middle of the worker group. But, um, but they've got they're putting honey in over here. This is on a black plastic foundation. Here is a frame of drone comb. So this green stuff, you'll find, I, I, I didn't bring one, but I used to use this stuff. So this is, this is a, a foundation, a frame foundation that's got big cells stamped on it, and it, it's all drones. So it's big and it gets filled with drones. And this Why is do a, you want that? Yeah. This is a way of controlling mites. Yeah. So varroa mites, varroa mites prefer to lay their eggs in a drone larva because um, the drone larva takes longer to mature, so the mite has longer to reproduce and to mature too. So what you would do if you had this, um, is you would take, take this out of the hive at this stage, because the varroa mites are in those capped cells, and you would uh, do something with it. You would freeze it to kill everything, and then unfreeze it and put it back in the hive, and the bees will um, eat the dead uh, larva. 
it's a source of protein. It's it's gross, um, <laughs> but, but it's, it's the bees don't mind. They, mm -hmm. It's fine for them. Um, but I, uh, you know, some people uh, some people will just scrape it off, put the put the empty frame back in, in the hive, um, and let them build the build the fat. Um, is this uh, once you know you? Once you know you have mites? You have mites. We have <laughs> yeah. for, you, all, you have mites. Forget for, You don't have to. You can know, you can have 100% confidence that you have mites. <laughs> um, so what are you doing to control it by freezing this one frame? You're killing well, the drone. So the mites, the mites see a drone cell. They see a drone larva and they say, oh boy. So if you were to go in and pull the larva out of this frame, and I've done this, it actually works, you will find mites on almost every one of those uh, larvae. So by taking this out at this stage and killing the larva and the mites, you've just killed a, a whole generation of mites, right? So you've killed a, a lot of drones, but you've also killed a whole generation of mites. And it's a very effective way Hi, Any way to do it other than freezing them? You can just scrape them off. You can feed them to chickens. You can, oh. you can do almost anything. I, I mean, you, you just have to get them away from. You just have to kill them. Um, but but if you freeze them and then you can feed that larva back to the hive. Back to the hive. Yeah, the bees will. They they don't have any concept of cannibalism, and they it's protein to them, right? Okay. And it's. It's, it's a way, I mean, the, the hive has put a lot of energy into ray, getting these, these larvae to that stage, right? That represents a tremendous investment in resources. So putting it back into the hive is actually the best way to, um, you know, support the hive. So when, when they you put it back in there and they eat, eat it all, they're larger cells, so are they going to lay more drone aids? Yes. They'll, they'll they're put, constantly just do drone aids in that. that they would just put drones in there, or they would put honey in it. They'll, they'll store honey in the drone, you know, in the drone cells. Huh. So do you still use this practice? It's too much work, right? I said I don't like to go, I like to leave my hives alone. <laughs> um, it's a lot of work, and if you put this stuff in there, and you don't get it out, then you've got more mites than you would have had. So it's a, it's a lot of work. I don't, I don't do... Yeah, if anyone wants some drum, you don't mind. That's an extra. Yeah. So here's bee bread. We saw this uh, live. Uh, it's a little bit brighter. Um, so you can see it. It's, it's lovely. You know, it's, this is, you know, different kinds of pollen um, make different colors. And, uh, it, it's kind of shiny because it's mixed with the uh, nectar. Um, it kind of smells like. Uh, Kind of smell, it has a bready smell because it is fermenting. Um, there's yeast in there. That's a queen cup. Queen cups are nothing to worry about, really. They're, they're, the bees will build them and, uh, just in case, um, but they're nothing really to uh, be concerned about. Um, what they're for is um, this one's for in case they need a new queen, they'll uh, lay, you know, the queen will. Lay uh, an egg in there, and the, uh, the the colony will create a. Do I have a picture of one here? There's a queen. There's a queen, but um, there's a queen. So this this is a this is a pretty healthy frame with a queen. Um, this is a happy you know, happy picture. What do you think, uh, experienced beekeeper Bruce? What do you think of that queen? Think she's a good queen? Looks young. Two years old. Two years old. Well, I don't know how old she is. She, the, the queens last year, the queens were yellow, so she could have been, but she could be from you know ten years ago. I don't know. So what, what, we, what, what am I missing? What what you don't see here, I mean, Adam, I want you. You don't see a lot of bees facing them, right? So like a ring around them. Right. So, so the stronger the queen is, the more pheromone she has, the more attendance she'll have. Um, and this this queen doesn't have 
And now it could be just an accident, you know, that when the picture was taken, she happened to have just moved and they happened to really oriented around her. But uh, this queen has not got many attendants kind of facing her and touching her, which is, it may indicate that she's not a really strong queen. So if, you're, if, you, if your hive is having trouble and you find the queen and you see that there's a mile lot of bees like touching her, that could be the uh, indication that you need a new queen. Um, let's see if this, so here's a video that I took two weeks ago of one of my queens. I, 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 I had a lot of luck finding you queens. Um, this is a clipped queen. I bought this queen clipped. So, if you if you look at her, she does have a fair number of attendants, right? So she everywhere she goes, there's the bees are, are facing her and touching her with their antenna. She did not lay while I was watching her. Um, Adam Adam's queens lay when when he's watching. They're doing tricks. Yeah, they're, they're kind of uh, exhibitionists. <laughs> my queens are, are shy and retiring. Um, so, so this is this is uh, you know this is pretty healthy. Um, kind of, I, I don't see any problems here. She's checking out the cells, but she's she had laid. She was there was brood in there. Um, I don't think she was having a problem. I just didn't happen to catch her laying eggs on the So normal problems. Wow, look at this. This is my some of my very own grown fruit. So this I couldn't believe this. I, I this was like the first year I was keeping bees and I bought this nice plastic foundation, this black plastic foundation. And the bees would not build home on the foundation. They would anchor it to the foundation and then they built it out from the foundation. And they're, and they're, they're, like they're, they're all behind it and over it. It's all from the room and it's a big mess. So what did you do with that frame? Thanks, I staked it off. Got rid of it. And I, I don't use plastic foundation. Um, it, it can work. I mean, I, I, you know, one of the frames that Suzanne had is plastic foundation. A lot of people use nothing but plastic foundation. It's very, it's got a lot of things to recommend it. It's easy to work with, but I've never had a lot of it. Um, this, what is that, folks? Queen cell. Super cell, yeah. So this, this is a, this is a queen cell that's, uh, and a, a, the, the hive has decided that the queen's no good, and so they've, they, they found a, you know, a larva that was less than three days old and they kind of ripped the um, surrounding foundation out and built this queen cell off of there for her to, to, to raise the queen in. Um, and you see these on the middle, the middle of the frame when they're, they're, it's not, they're not trying to swarm, they're just trying to replace their queen. Um, a lot of times you'll get a package, you have a new package of bees, put them in the hive, and you'll come back the next week and you'll see one or two of these things. Because um, the, for whatever reason, the bees don't like the queen that they got, um, and they want to build it, and they want a new one right away. Um, well, they just, did they just do one of them, or would they do more? They'll do more than one. And the first one out will kill the other yeah. one. So, if you see that, what do you do? Try to kill the other queen? What do you do? The, that's what the queen will do when she comes out, but what will you do is start to split, split your up or split? split. split. No, you can't. So, if you see that, the hive's trying to replace a queen that it thinks is inadequate. Um, and that can happen for a lot of different reasons. You know, the queen can get old, Um, if you have a really strong hive, um, this queen could be fine, right? So the, the, the strength of the queen is related to the strength of the hive. If the hive is really strong, if there's a lot of nurse bees, if there's a 
lot of uh, resources and energy in that organism, the, the organism that's the colony, then they can raise a healthy queen. But if it's a new colony, if it's a package that's not very strong, then they probably won't be able to give that queen the resources that she needs to be healthy. So if, you're, if you see one of these and you've got a weak colony, a colony that doesn't have two full boxes of, of bees and doesn't have a good brood nest, you want to get rid of it and, and buy a queen, buy a commercial queen. Now you only have a 50-50 shot of getting a good queen when you buy a commercial queen. But that's probably better than you'll have with a, you know, with a, a super senior queen. But if the, if the colony's strong, go for it. Like a, you could split your colonies and let them make a queen if, if the colonies are strong. And for the most part, when they do that, they're fine. So would you, would you take that frame out and put it in another, like a new box? No, I would just cut that cell off, squish it. If I were splitting, then this would be fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, you can do a, a, a split, you just take a box that's full of bees, you put it on a new, uh, new stand, and you basically walk away. You don't really ever want to, you actually don't ever want to see this, right? If you've got a, if you know there's going to be a super seeker cell in because you've split, you don't want to go in there because these are very delicate and you could, you could damage it by looking at it. By taking it out and disturbing the damage. So, if if you're trying to have a super procedure clean by making a split, split, don't even look. You, know, you don't even want to see this. But if you're examining your hive and you see something like this, and the hive isn't strong, um, you need to get a new queen. They're rejecting the queen you have and trying to build another one, but you would squish this one. Yeah, because they're not strong enough to build a, to make to raise a strong one. And when you get a new queen, put her in the pie, what do you do with the queen? That's a whole other <laughs> beekeepers meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Adam will run this. That's a whole other meeting. That's a, that's a lot. That's a, Us will tell you. Dave's yeah, not yeah. trying to be contrary. We no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm just. It's, it is a. It is a fairly complicated topic, and actually, I'm not even that good at it. I've had mediocre success. So what's going on here? There's some drone, drone cells in the bottom. No? Yeah, there probably are. There's a few drone cells. So um, this is a situation. I guess he wouldn't call it honey bound, he might call it a, a bee bread bound. But this is, this is a, um, you've got, this is brood nest, mm -hmm. and we've got brood out here, and this brood has hatched out, and instead of, uh, instead of putting, you know, laying new brood in here, the bees are filling it in, and they'll fill it in with uh, pollen, or they'll fill it in with honey. Um, this means that your hive is getting ready to swarm. So when the, eventually, you know, the bees are, are telling the queen, stop laying, you know, we've got enough, we've got, we don't have enough room to keep all this stuff. We've got so, there's so many of us, we're pulling in so much resources, you know, we, we, we don't have room, we need to split. We need to, uh, we need to leave and let the, let a new queen live here and go start a new home. So if you see, Something like this, where you've got you know the, the, the colonies filling back filling the brood nest, then this is a, a sign that you need to put more. Um, you need to either get ready to swarm, you need to split it, you need to artificially swarm it, you need to put empty frames in here. You need to do something to to um, give the queen more room to lay get the hot colony more room to expand and to keep them strong. Although, sometimes it's hard to keep them from strong. Um, here's, a, here's a frame that's got swarm cells. So these are queen cells. Um, this is a frame, uh, a colony that's probably already swarmed because these are, the, the queens are already out of there. 
Um, typically what they say, and I, I think I'm a believer, is if you, if you see these and they're capped, especially if they're capped off, you can assume that this, the colony's already swarmed. Um, because uh, pretty much as soon as they cap the, over those queen cells, the, the queen will leave. Because she knows that there's another queen ready to come along. She doesn't have to stick around anymore. She'll, she'll go. So if you open up your hive, and this has happened to me many times, <laughs> and if you find these guys, even if they aren't hatched out, of, you can be pretty sure that, uh, that the, the hive is already swimming. And sometimes, after the swarm, it doesn't look like there's any less bees. I mean, it's pretty amazing because you can. I, I had this colony. It wasn't very big, maybe maybe a, a deep and two mediums, and um, it was last spring when it was really really warm, and it was like April first, and it was a huge swarm. It was like enormous, and the bee, the boxes with the, the you know that they swarmed from was it was full. It was just. It's <laughs> How do we do that? Um, okay, here's an interesting one. So this, if you see something like this, if you see the eggs, more than one egg in a cell, um, the eggs on the side, Stuff. It kind of was years long. Didn't even make it all the way to the bottom. This isn't, there's no queen. There's no, there's no queen in this hive. A, a, a worker has started laying the eggs. So uh, some workers have enough uh, you know, equipment that they can lay eggs. Will this work? Um, Unfortunately, they're all, yeah, they're all, they'll be, all drones. be drones. Now, every one of these eggs will be drones. They'll, they will nurture these eggs, they will raise them, um, but um, they will be, they'll all be, um, and eventually the hive will collapse because there's no, no worker. Just for the, Suzanne. the new folks, so you explain why, how do you know they'll all turn out to be drones? Because maybe oh, the on, new people don't know, I don't know, I just... So, um, so does, does everybody know why, how a bee becomes a, a worker or a drone? The queen decides, no? The queen decides. How does she decide? Well, to, I was told two different ways. That the cell is bigger, she'll lay, she'll lay a drone egg in there. Mm -hmm. But what's the difference between the eggs? Or or fertilized or not. Once for right. So a worker, a worker is fertilized. So the, the queen goes out and mates with a dozen drones. She stores their sperm in her abdomen. Um, when she's laying an egg, she can decide whether to, you know, mix some uh, sperm in with that egg or, or just lay the egg without fertilizing. So if she's laying it in a large cell, she'll lay an unfertilized egg. And that would be a drone. And that would be a drone if she's laying it in a normal size cell, then she wants a worker, she'll fertilize the egg and it'll be a, a female, a worker. Um, it's interesting, so drones have no fathers, right? Because they, they don't have a, their, their egg is unfertilized, they only have, they have a grandfather. Right? Because the queen came from a fertilized egg. So drones have no uh, fathers. Anyway, so this is, uh, I've had really good success um, dealing with this. I, I, it's only happened to me a couple of times. Um, but it's the, the thing to, the way you deal with this, is you have to have more than one hive. So if you have just one hive, you have to have a friend who has a hive. But the way to deal with this is um, you have to go back to this hive every week or so and put a, a frame that has um, fertilized, uh, uh, eggs. So you take a frame from one of your healthy, strong hives, put it into this hive. The bees will, when they find a uh, fertilized uh, larva, they will raise a queen um, and they will raise, you know, worker bees. And they'll stop 
um, laying, the, the, the laying worker will stop and the, the pheromones from the um, root is present. So it's not, I've heard people say that you have to kill the company when this happens, but I've, I've had good luck, um, you know, just doing that. It works pretty well. So here's a, a wax moth, our friend the wax moth. Here's the, the webbing, the wax moth is the sign of the wax moth activity. Um, wax moths are bad, but, but wax moths are no threat at all to a strong colony. If you see a wax moth in any sign of wax moth in a colony, it's, it, the colony's too weak. So you need to combine that colony with another colony or, or you know, give it brood or something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's too weak to, you know, to maintain the space that it's in and to, to maintain its uh, viability. Um, wax moths are, are really actually in, in nature, so nature bees live in trees, right? So they, there's no beekeepers recycling the comb or anything. So they, 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 they'll lay the eggs in there and the, the, the larvae actually spin a little cocoon around themselves in there and then they emerge. And that cocoon gets left inside the, inside the cell, right? And that goes on for a little while and eventually it gets too small. The, the inside of the cell gets too small and, and they can't, they have to, they have to abandon that tree or whatever it is. The wax moths are actually eating that cocoon. They're not eating the wax. They're eating the, the leftover cocoon. They go in, they clean out everything that was there, all the, all the brood nests especially. And then the bees can move back in and, and use that so the wax moths are actually part of the ecology of bees. They're, they're helpers, but, um, but you know, if, they, if you leave your comb out in the field, you don't destroy it. Um, this is a hive beetle. These are the worst things in the world. Um, I spent all last summer squishing these guys. I don't have a good solution for them yet. I'm going to try trapping them. Um, I'm going to try putting my hives on uh, some kind of cinder block so that they're completely, um, uh, so that there's no ground, so no dirt directly under the hives, so that the, um, I think that will help. Um, there's also uh, uh, several people who said that by adding lime to the ground, ground yeah. it changed the pH. Uh -huh. I've tried lime and it hasn't seemed to make any difference, but yeah, I've tried that. I've tried to break the traps before. Yeah, I've had those, but they're, they're high maintenance. Oh, they're putting them at the top. Yeah. Chase them up there. Right. Shake them out every week. Shake them out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have had some luck, but I didn't, I had, you know, not, I didn't have great luck last week. I'm going to try making traps out of seed. I tried those little uh, Wolf Creek, you know, the, yeah. the signs with the uh, Crisco and... Uh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, you did the Wolf Creek the guy said, showed us how to do it last year, and they didn't work at all, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think that, uh, I think, I don't think, you know, I don't know if I have a picture. Can you get them out of there? Yeah, you can. That's the problem. So. I don't think, I, I mean, if, in the south, beetles get really bad, and, and beetles will take over a hive, and they'll just destroy it. Um, the larva will crawl, you know, dig through the honey, the honey will ferment, it'll just, they can kill a hive in the south. I don't think, I've never seen them kill a hive. Um, they haven't been that bad for me. I think that they just, you know, the bees will basically herd them into the corner, keep them in the corner. and. I think it just takes a lot of effort on the part of the bees. Those bees that are herding them into the corners can't be out foraging. And I think it just, it's just, that, I think that's the, the problem that they cause for the most part. But they're, they're terrible in the way they them. I didn't have trouble with them until this last year. Um, these are Varroa mites. 
So these are this is a close up of the mics. That's the, the top and that's the bottom. This is a, a drone pupa that's been pulled out that has mics on it. That's what you would see if you pulled it out of that drone. This is a, 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 a board that was under a screen bottom board. And this is the kind of the garbage that falls out of the hive normally, but you'll see um, mites in there. But that's, uh, that's kind of what you see. You, you should be, there's tests you can do, sugar bowls and alcohol bowls and stuff like that for alcohol water you can do to test for mites. I mean, you should do that, but that's another lecture. Um, but this is what you would, th these are some things that you would see if you had mites. You would, and you do have mites. This is, you see this stuff if they're, if they're bad. Um, they come in your package, so the package that you buy will have some mites in there. Um, when your bees go out and rob honey from my bees, they'll pick mites up from my bees. My bees would do that. They would, and they do. But when my bees come and rob your bees, um, uh, your bees will have mites and my bees will bring them home. Um, they're just, basically, they're, they're in all of the bees in North America now, except the owls. <laughs> and the wild. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. But yeah, so they're they're really they're a lot of awful and, and bad thing. So okay, here's something. This is an interesting little movie I made. Let's see if I can turn up the volume here. So what is this? It's not what I'm going to tell you it is, but uh, so this, uh, these are frames that I had extracted, right? So I had I had uh, extracted these frames and I had uh, set them out in my backyard, and within an hour, you know, they were covered with hundreds of bees, probably mostly from my own hives, um, which are in the area that there's a bumblebee. Um, <laughs> And this is, this is uh, robbing behavior. So I'm showing this to you so that if you see your bees acting like this around your hives, you will know what it is because the first few times I saw it, I had no idea what it was. So these guys, this is a bee feeding frenzy. Um, these, this, is, this is what your bees will do to my bees. Um, and if they get a chance, it might be to do it with bees. So, in the fall, this is a real problem in the fall. Um, if you have more than one hive, and if, if they're not all strong, or if uh, you have one, some hives that are stronger than others, and you uh, are feeding, or you are working the hive, and you have it open, um, and you start to get all this, feel all this energy from these bees flying around like that everywhere, it, the robbing has started, and they, they, that's a, that's a problem. Um, uh, the best advice I heard was Michael, well, was it Michael Bush? Somebody said if you, if that starts happening, what you do is you go take the lids off the strong hives, open them up, and then the, the bees from the strong hives will come back, will have to stay to defend their hives, and it will calm things down. The other thing you can do is, there's a special little robin screen, it's a kind of a, a baffle that you put on the front of the hive, and the bees that are inside can figure out how to get out, but the robbers, the robbers are very aggressive and they pretty much just kind of, they're flying, they're not, they're not kind of working their way in there and thinking about how to get it, they're just kind of going as fast and they'll just sort of, you know, bounce off and give up. But that's, that's a normal problem. I have two hives that are right next to each other, when I open them up, should I all the other ones so they don't do that? It's, it's probably not a problem. I mean, most of the time it won't be a problem. Um, if um, all of my hives are right next to each other, um, the, it'll, be a pro it'll be harder in the fall. Um, and um, in, the, in the spring and when there's a lot of nectar around, they don't, they're not robbing them. They're out in the forest. But in the fall, when there's less nectar and they're not having to uh, 
Another another picture of that same frame. This is a real people. That, that's what happened when you were really, really sick. So needless to say, this was a and here's you know, here's another bit of so if you see holes in the top of your cappings, that's you've got a sick column. Um, and what did I do with this colony? I I, I tried to treat it for mites. So I tried to treat it for mites. I put the, um, the formic acid strip, that's what I've been using to treat for mites. And I think I even put some, uh, some of that uh, antibiotic stuff on this one, I was so freaked out. But I, I, this high didn't make it. Um, it, was a, it was a really, really strong high. So this was one of my strongest highs. This was the high that um, came from that swarm I was talking about, the really early spring swarm. Incredibly strong high that put up Lots of honey. Um, it didn't make it. Um, last year, all three of my very strongest hives didn't make it. So um, I think my theory is that uh, the stronger the hive is, the stronger the parasites are, the stronger the, the disease vectors are. And that you know, I I looked at this hive and it was just so healthy. I kind of said, eh, it's pretty good. I don't have to do anything. Um, and until it was, you know, September or late August, and I, I started uh, looking at it closely, and I started seeing this kind of stuff. So um, I think, uh, you know, don't don't do that. <laughs> if you've got a really strong hive, um, look for look more closely for problems because, um, especially especially this kind of stuff, the, the, the um, that's a great sign that there's a problem. Is if the brood. Uh, cappings are perforated. Um, and I don't really know what I would have done earlier. I probably would have treated it for mites a lot earlier in the season if I had uh, um, noticed uh, this stuff going on. Um, but I'm not sure that that would have taken care of everything. What would you do, Adam, if you saw something like that? Nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, yeah, I just, if they're going to die, I just let them die. Yeah. But you then resurrect that box or put that box back into use next season? Yeah, I will. I will. I, I yeah, I did. I made sure that all of my frames were I put out in the, in the freezing cold. So I 
I'm going to make sure that there's no insects in there by freezing them. Um, there may be, you know, there may be, you know, there may be stuff in there, but I think a, a healthy colony will deal with it. Um, and I'll watch them for uh, mites and try to keep the mites in. Um, it's possible, I mean, if I've never had a uh, foul brood, um, but if, you know, what they say is if you've got foul brood, you have to burn the equipment because of the spores. It's a, it's a disease, um, uh, it's a, bee, a brood disease, and it will, um, I don't know what this is, this is one that uh, Suzanne sent me. I think that this is probably chalk brood, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. Um, but in, in foul brood, you'll um, open the, the capping up and you'll put in a little stick and you'll pull it out and it'll be like snot. The, the larva will sort of deteriorate and it'll, it'll pull uh, out of an inch or so. What causes that? It's a bacteria, a bacterial disease. There's two flavors, American foul brood and European foul brood. Uh, apparently it stinks. I've never yep. come across it. Bruce, yep. it stinks. It's, it's even illegal to kind of move from one state to another even have it. Yeah. But someone snuck it into a meeting in Delaware and said, well, it smells something nasty. It's yeah, just, so you have to burn everything. Yeah, or so get your rain. Right. So All the yeah. equipment. If you do it twice a year, there's a service. Oh. Right. So the Montgomery County beekeepers will take right. a pallet of, you can take them a pallet of your equipment and they'll take them to a, an irradiation, a fruit irradiation facility. But you have to deal with Yeah, you have to deal with foul brood. It's probably the worst thing. Yeah, yeah, foul brood is, is, is the death sentence for a high fruit. Um, I'm grateful that I've never had it, but uh, a lot of people. Yes. Yeah, so Nosema is a fungal infection. Um, and uh, Nosema, I didn't have any pictures of it. You can't really see it on the bees. Um, I, I should have brought, there was another picture right there. But you could, they, they get diarrhea. Um, it's like muscle, you see this little brown or yellow streaks of uh, diarrhea um, on the outside of the box. When they have it. But um, it's, it's fairly common, um, and it's probably related to a hive that is sort of not doing well, that has a, a, a brood pattern. I, I actually had some pictures that I didn't include for some reason. But you'll get a, you saw the picture of the really nice brood pattern, right? If, if that had a lot of holes in it, and kind of, you know, 25 to 50% of the, of the uh, surface were um, empty cells or cells with, with uh, new brood laid in them. It's probably because there is some kind of disease process going on. The brood are, are dying. The bees are pulling them out and getting rid of them. The queen's coming back and laying into those cells. The hive's not strong enough to backfill with honey, so the queen's filling in. Fine. Some kind of process going on, and I'm not, I'm not, a, you know, a, a strict uh, no treatments beekeeper. I, I tend to, I feed my bees when I when I think they need it, um, and I use uh, formic acid to treat the mites. Um, but for the most part, I, I tend to try to leave them alone and let them uh, work things out themselves. And when I see something like that, I. I, I don't know what to do exactly. I will most of the time try to either increase the strength of the hive or um, combine it with another hive. That's, that's you can really treat for this. Yeah. You can treat for there. There's a, uh, a broad spectrum antifungal um, called fumigil. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can that Me too. Yeah, I, I, I used to use it. I just don't anymore. So. My issue is They <laughs> it was moist. And, uh, they just kind of like uh, almost if they caught a cold and they were just puking up this yellow stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did some, did some heavy feeding. Uh, with you and yellow. Yeah, it's yeah. expensive, but it, it worked. Yeah. yeah, I have a friend who was a, an AIDS doctor. And she, she 
get the beekeeping catalog because she was giving human going to her AIDS patients. Wow. <laughs> this was in the 80s or 90s when they were they didn't know what to do with it. And her, her patients were getting fungal infections and she didn't have any good treatment, so she tried to But she keeps getting the catalogs. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.